Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Dr. Peter Flynn, back to episode 10. Congratulations on the double digits to me and you. Uh, you got your back of the crease, got my monster. Ah, uh, you spoiled it. The mystery liquid. Oh, the mystery liquid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got your yeah. monster. I've got my ginseng. Mm, um, beautiful. Which are delicious. That's that not amazing. <laughs> we so say delicious, good. but they do not taste delicious. I actually think they're delicious now. I've grown so accustomed to them. There's literally like five of these things like scattered around. <laughs> <laughs> I was at anything I know is healthy and is and like has the effects you want. This gives you like a little energy boost. I say it's delicious. Uh, but if anyone's trying this, it's like a, a German person trying Vegemite. And you're like, yeah, it's delicious. They're like, I can see why people would say it's not. <laughs> mm, anyway, episode 10, <laughs> making money. Um, if you're watching along and you've been watching along, make sure you do hit that like button and that subscribe below so you get updated as we progress towards the six-figure, maybe seven-figure range, depending on how wild our next week is. Um, but... Dr. Peter Flynn, you've given me a couple of teasers before we went live. How have you gone this week? This week has been challenging because I made some I made some crypto trades that have not paid off thus far. And I can talk through, maybe I'll talk through them now, the ones that I did make. Uh, so I might just share screen and show you where, where we're up to. So I might start by adding a little bit of black into this one. And Boom. you can see that we've... We've dropped, what is it, $1,500 this week. I've and got to say impressive. The Only the third week in the negatives out of 10. I know, I know but uh, let, let's dive into it because a few things have gone really well this week. If we jump over here, we can see that Tyro is continuing to push up. So that was sitting in the negative for quite a while. They've released mm. their reports of saying we were looking at and over, over this time, we've been able to see that they've just continually like made more and more and more money. And what, what happens when a business makes more money, they become worth more and more people want to invest in it. And so they're 7.2% up from when they first bought in, which was at $3.47. Which is massive in that amount massive, of time. Massive. And they were about $3.84 actually earlier this week as well, which would have been 10% up. Wow. Yeah. And Webjet was also about $5.70 earlier this week, which had been 17% up, and they had a little Jesus. bit of a drop-off. And the same with SCG, which is uh, uh, Westfield. So they released their report too, and they're, they're killing it, absolutely crushing it. So we can see they're 12.9% up. So out of the stocks we have here, we can see 11.29% up, which is for the stock market, for 10 weeks in the stock market, to be 11.29% up is, is ridiculous, right? Unreal. It's amazing. Yeah. And, <laughs> however, Unreal. when we compare this to the crypto returns, it can be uh, quite drastically different. And it is a funny where- comparison because this, if you're sitting at home and watching and you want like, there's nothing risk-free and obviously it's not financial advice and all that jargon, but it's like, it's backed by companies that are doing mm. really well. So to get 11% for almost a risk-free or a very low risk is ridiculous in 10 weeks. No, absolutely. Now, in the crypto world, I decided to take that $15,000 in cash and put it in three different cryptos that I'd looked into a little bit. So nothing changed from my portfolio of VeChain, Axie Infinity, et cetera. But I bought Smooth Love Potion. I oh, yeah, bought yeah. $5,000 of that. And that's actually within Axie Infinity. So I thought because I'm quite bullish on Axie Infinity as a game, that's like another token within that game. And <laughs> the only thing that's happened is I've turned that $5,000 into $4,000 <laughs> over the past week. <laughs> Just not gone to plan at all. Don't pull up the chart. Uh, I, I can pull up the chart. Let me just... Uh... I- my understanding, I don't have a big understanding of Axie, but the Smooth Love Potion is, I believe you need it to breed your mm. Axies. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Which is, which is why I was a little bit maybe bullish on it going, well, the more people that are playing the game, the more people that are going to want this. Uh, if we maybe go the last seven days. So I bought in. <laughs> i'm like it looks pretty flat so, except for that so, one peak where some crazy somewhere people in. <laughs> somewhere along there was where i sort of bought in and it's continuously uh gone down since then unfortunately mm. 
However, I am going to hold that one and I'm going to be, I do believe the game is going to be great long term. And I look at the player numbers, et cetera, and it does seem to be moving in the right direction. And this is something that people use within that game. So it does have like usability. So I'm going to hold on to that, even though it's 20% down over the week. But that's the thing with cryptos. It can be 20% down over the week and then it can go 100% up next week. Mm. Uh, the other one I bought into is BTT, so BitTorrent. If I pull that one up, BTT coin price. And if we go to the last seven days. And again, this one has dropped about oh, four or five percent since I since I got into it. So I'd have to have a look at exactly what I bought in at, but it would have been somewhere around here, and it's sitting a little bit down at the moment. Mm. And this one here, uh, I don't have a hugely impressive reason for why I picked this one. Uh, I was looking at a few different ones and over time, uh, I've had a lot of people talking about this and I kind of thought, well, I might listen it and just take a little bit of a stock tip from people here, which is normally what I would not do, but mm. from some people that have done really well in the crypto world that I've been following on TikTok. So I thought, hey, I'm actually just going to put this on a little bit. I of never effect. thought that sentence would come out of your mouth, sir. I, so people it. in the crypto world that are, I follow on TikTok. That I follow on TikTok. <laughs> and so I thought, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get this and I'm just going to hold it long term. And again, see how we go with this. Mm. And then the other $5,000 I put was on Dogecoin. And that has just plummeted since I bought the butter thing, mm. uh, which is a little bit frustrating. But let's find that one up here for us, Dogecoin. Here we are. And if we look at the past five days even, uh, let's get one month. I kind of bought in maybe, what was it, seven days ago, somewhere up here. Mm. It's now gone down a bit. However, I wouldn't be surprised if we see another random peak soon. So I'm just going to continue to hold it because for no particular reason, it seems to have massive peaks and troughs. Mm. And so buying and holding, I think, over the long term is going to be a beneficial strategy. Just wait till Elon Musk puts up like one little tweet about this thing and he's like, Dogecoin to the moon and it's going to shoot up again and then I can sell, hopefully, somewhere, uh, somewhere so above what I paid for it. It would be fantastic. 11%. Be fantastic. <laughs> Just wish you double down on, uh, on top. Yeah. So that's where we're at, at the moment, sitting at 47,000. Not too unhappy with that over 10 weeks. There is no longer any sound, however. <laughs> we're back. No, we're not actually back. I thought we were back. Testing. Yes, there we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, I'm very interested to hear how you've gone this week, though. I'm excited to share my week. It was a very eventful week. One of success and uh, things that have paid off that weren't initially paying off as, as well as I thought they would be. So it's so, sort of like your um, stocks, where it's like the, the theories mm -hmm. are there, but they're just not there yet. But um, well, I mean, they haven't been realized yet. So I mean, I guess I'll just jump on into desktop. So I did have a very big week, um, but it's nothing um that knew that really that i've done so i'm actually at eighty-seven thousand, which is a gain of forty-one thousand, which is almost a doubling uh nice. where has it come from i think pete you already know it comes from the curio card which i'll actually pull up um now everyone i've explained why i bought this curio card i bought it for 2600 bucks it was the first ever piece of artwork minted to the ethereum blockchain back in 2017, one month before CryptoPunks. Uh, now, if you haven't gone and watched that, go watch that stuff. Everybody knows who CryptoPunks are. Uh, if you don't, go watch it. Uh, Jay-Z's put his CryptoPunk out. Now, a couple of things that really led to this bull run. One, Visa, old money, mm. bought into a CryptoPunk. Now, CryptoPunks were thought to be the original um, piece of art minted to the uh to the ethereum blockchain but at the same time uh crypto crypto punks are a lot more aesthetically pleasing than um the curio cards which we can get into in a little bit but you can see visa bought a uh a punk which 
hits mainstream news. It also hits everybody in the NFT space to be like, you know, it's coming. We're a couple of years away from this becoming an actual uh, more mainstream earlier or later earlier adopters. It's still going to be early adopters over the next three to five years. Uh, And that just gives it a green light. The thing that, however, that absolutely accelerated Curio cards, uh, which just, I know I said go watch, but I'll show you if you don't know what these are. Uh, They're a collection of 30 cards. Um, Most of them were minted before CryptoPunks. I own the Apple. I also, out of this challenge, own a couple of Mona Lisas, which I bought at $1,000 each. And they now sit at about, at the moment, they're about $9,000 US each. Uh, They did get up to about $12,000, but they have dipped a little. Um, and that's outside this challenge. And now, why do I own these Mona Lisas? One, because they're the first ever Mona Lisa on a blockchain, which, you know, this is when you talk about artwork, this is what this space is. It's NFT artwork. And this is the piece of artwork. And this was the first piece of artwork in the first ever set. Uh, that is the Mona Lisa, obviously. And the news that actually came out uh, this week, which is fascinating, um, and it hasn't come to mainstream, but it's been realized within the early, early adopters is that Christie's, who auctioned off CryptoPunks, don't look at that other search stuff. <laughs> it's just Eminem lyrics coming up. Uh, Christie's <laughs> private auction house, which um, auctions off da- literally real Da Vinci's. Um, uh, real, r- real life Da Vinci's, like Salvador Mundi, the savior of the world, uh, that was a uncovered Da Vinci painting owned by two kings of England, uh, went for $450 million to the Sheik, uh, the crown prince of uh, Dubai, like in four years ago, an actual Da Vinci painting. But Christie's auctioned off um, CryptoPunks and they went for a few million dollars. Christie's have now announced, actually, sorry, correct. They haven't announced, but it's known through the Christie's, um, people who worked at Christie's have confer- confirmed it. They're auctioning off a full set of Curio cards October 1st. Uh, and this Christie's, you know, this goes back, they sell the Da Vinci's. It goes back to the 1770s is when their auction house was created. They sell hundreds of millions of artwork to old money. Um, everyone who's like, you know, tax havening stuff. Mm. Uh, and people are going to start to get into this digital world. Uh, you can see the crypto punks off for 17 million. So these had a massive bull run recently. Uh, because everybody knows October 1st, these are going to be auctioned at Christie's. So I'm holding, I think that news hasn't been real officially released by Christie's, which is the social arb trade. Hold that news that people don't know. Um, I'm holding, I think this can go a lot further, higher than it is. Um, and obviously, it's, I, I put in $44,000 here. It actually did reach 70000 at one point this week. Um, I wish I had two of them, but I don't. Uh, and I've got some some other stuff outside the challenge. But what this has done, you can see, oh, the other thing just briefly to mention is my tail, my tailwind has become a headwind. I'm actually down $2,000 on that um, US dollar, AU dollar uh, play here because this was a dollar 40 last week and now it's a dollar 36 of which actually I'm learning a lot about Google Sheets and I've been pulling these numbers in automatically from Google Finance. It's like a really nifty. Uh, oh, I didn't know you could do that. Bro, it's the most exciting thing I've ever done. It's like oh, Funko Pop. Is, it's getting live. It's ridiculously cool. Stop it. I know. I know, man. I was so excited by this. I'm making this some This is life-changing. Um, but what I've actually done, because I've crossed my $60,000 and I pledged, once I got to $60,000, <laughs> I could be shiny again. You could be shiny again. I'm so excited for this yeah, episode. Back. Because it's time to get really, really shiny. I've given Etsy a really good go, and I've got great news on Etsy as well. Uh, but because I've crossed that $60,000 limit, and when I look at this, I mess with some IPOs, which is a terrible idea. Like this one, I still haven't sold off. I'm just holding on. I'm down 50% <laughs> on it. Uh, I think the best area for me to turn this money into a mill has to be NFTs. I enjoy it. I'm passionate about it. It's so volatile. We're so early in the market. Um, it's a, it's a no-brainer for me to do anything but NFTs and Etsy. Uh, I will keep a little bit of money in the dumb money basket, but as of literally yesterday to today, I'm switching that focus back to NFTs. And I've got that NFT bug where it's like, all I want to do, I dream about these NFTs. I wake up, I want to research them. I have to limit when I'm checking them, how often I'm refreshing them. 
uh, because like I'm just so pulled towards it yeah. that I'm like, okay, as long as I carve out my 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. work hours, everything else I get a workout in, everything else I can do NFT. So that's sort of where I stand on that. And I'm going to triple down on these NFTs. And I think it's a risky world, but you know, if we're trying to get 80K to a mil, <laughs> we can be 12X. Look at that smooth graph. <laughs> I know, dude, that's... It's funny because I felt so much better about this this little line than this one. This is almost like the validation of the investment. And this is like, yeah, I thought this might happen. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm going to hold, continue to hold him. Although I don't know how much you want to talk about it. Someone minted um, extra apples to OpenSea. Now, for what this means is basically there's a limited supply of apples. There's 2,000. Mm. And we'll say 1,000 of them were in active wallets. So people who have shown to actually know they have them in their wallet because it's from four years ago. So there were a thousand apples in dead wallets. People haven't touched their wallet in a thousand days. And what it was is uh, they're like, okay, these people have forgotten that they had apples. They don't know they had apples and uh, they probably won't ever remember. Someone woke up, a dead wallet woke up and minted 50 apples to OpenSea. And I'm like, oh God. And that's what took it from 70K down to, down to like 35K. And what's funny is, is I was like, oh, what I should do is I should sell it for like 60, 55, ride the way down and buy back in at 35. And, you know, like have that <laughs> cash to play with more NFTs. And I'm like, yeah. And I'm, I'm sort of just speaking my thoughts here because I want to come back one day and look no. at this and be like, oh, what should I have actually done? And it would have worked perfectly. But also in, this, in the sense that this market is so volatile and you can have, you can go from 10K, like I think this Apple was at last week to 70K in one week. If I woke up and those apples were like 140 and I'd sold trying to cash out like 10, 15 K, it just to me wasn't worth that actual, that mental risk. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to be holding this apple for a while, I think, which is tough because a lot of my liquid cash gets locked up. I've only got 10 K, but what I did is I sold out of Apple. I sold 7 K out of Apple. I still hold 3 mm. K. Um, I made a 7% sold out at uh, $148.55 when I bought in 138, which was a good place to temporarily store that cash. Mm. So, so good find, little profit. Good little profit. Um, but I'm moving him over to uh, the NFT space and um, I'm going to start with this. Maybe try and get some more money in there, try and take out a DeFi loan. Um, but I'll update you all about that last week, depending on how everything goes. We might rock up and I'll be at 20K again. Uh, the last thing that I want to share some very exciting news, which doesn't look exciting. Once again, when you look at this Etsy total down here, I'm launching a digital journal brand on Etsy. I've spent 407 in ads. I've made $300 back, but this whole business has cost me $107 total. And I'm going to open a new browser over here. Uh, incognito, go to etsy.com, type in our main keyword, which is digital notebook now we don't have a, a planner yet digital planners are much more searched than notebooks but when i pull up digital notebook you can see we are uh, up here on the ads and we're also down here uh ranking very highly and we fluctuate between these top eight listings i've actually seen this at number one um which means for 120 bucks we've bought the seo real estate at the top of our main keyword which is ridiculously good <laughs> When I click on it, we've now got 69 sales. Yay. And that's huge. Six reviews. We actually just got a four star like five minutes before we went live here, which I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Stitch up. Where the four star go? Oh, it's not in yet. Has enough Oy, she's um, unless she's taking it back. But um, this is very exciting to me because we also have a lot more of a range. We've got these different colors going up. Um, you can see we've got lots of people having this in our basket. A couple of our colors, actually, if I go back to the non-private, are actually profitable return on ad spend. Very profitable. They've just started, um, but we're doing a lot of split testing. And uh, where do I go? Ads. Let me scroll down to these colors down here. You can see we've spent $4 to make $9 on the lavender. And then the Ooh, other one that lavender. was profitable was we spent $19 to 26 on the blush. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a color? Come on, mate. Come on. <laughs> it's a different target market out in this world. Um, and then actually the last thing on this that I thought was absolutely fantastic is 
not only do you get um, to orders and delivery, let's go to one of our orders over here. This girl who just bought uh, a Samantha Pap Papinchak. If you click on here, you, they literally give you their emails. And not only do they give you their emails, they give you integrations into things like Aweber, which is an email provider where they encourage you to build a brand from your store. And I was mind blown by this because this is like, this goes from like a passive income to like a seven figure brand. Once you have that, that brand affinity, put them, push them out to your socials. Uh, the other thing I looked at, which I don't, we don't have to go too deep now was Marmalade, which is an Etsy SEO keyword tool, which was actually pretty good. Um, but I'm very happy with how Etsy's going. Uh, although we are, of course, in the red, I think there's not a better way to build a brand than $107 in to have 70 sales, six positive reviews, 70 emails. We've got 70 emails of people who digital journal and we've got products coming out every week that we can just literally cross sell to them. That's ridiculous. That's actually amazing. Dude, absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. So that's where my focus is that Etsy and those NFTs because I can see them both getting me there. Yeah, Etsy gives you the cash flow. Cash flow goes into NFTs. Yeah, very nice. Getting on the more curio cards, I imagine. Potentially. The problem with the curio cards is they're, for me, a long hold. And I don't want to be tied up and not have too much liquid. Mm. No, that's fair. Mm. I really regret not hedging, uh, buying that Apple when it was 10K. And I was thinking about buying it just to hedge my bets against you there. I don't know big, if it's big regrets. I don't know if it's on record. I don't know if we did it after the podcast, but like the amount of times we went and visited that Apple on your share screen, like after the podcast, you'd be like, should I? Mm. <laughs> there was a few uh, times that we did it. There was one time, especially when I had the cash flow sitting there and I was like, oh, all right. I could do it just to hedge and I chose not to. Went with Smooth Love Potion instead. Terrible <laughs> decision. <laughs> That's when I, I went with uh, ADA over a VFriend and ADA, which is a cryptocurrency, VFriend is an mm. NFT. ADA was, is like 100% returns, which is fantastic. But VFriends is like uh, 10x returns. I'm like, hmm, mm. good lesson. Good, good lesson. <laughs> 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 be interesting to see what happens then uh, is it christie's when they do announce if they do announce mainstream that they are going to sell those what really happens like how high can they go well they're surprisingly low compared to a lot of other nft projects that aren't being sold at christie's which is every other project because and this is getting a little bit deep into the nft world a lot of NFTs have a community and utility. So like Board 8 Yacht Club, for example, is around a game. It's around a um, like a whole metaverse where people interact and play. And like you can imagine like a futuristic digital virtual world where people actually live uh, and they have plots of land and stuff where Curio cards are a collector's item. So they're just the, they are the first. There's a good community behind them, but they're not, there's no real utility or at least promised utility because nothing really has utility at the moment. It's all promised utility. And I mean, Board Ape Yacht Club, they have 10,000 pieces uh, and their floor, which is the cheapest one, is uh, 25 ETH, which is $75,000, where the Curio card floor is, uh, I believe, $4,500. So it's, it's actually funny to compare to other projects. Mm. It's not crazy high. Interesting. That could be a good thing to, uh, yeah, like you said look more into it because that could literally you could hit a million dollars by the end of the year if things go the right way and you have enough liquidity to invest in those career cards yes yes i i think mm. i i could see that um i can also see it just exploding <laughs> i think a lot of people will make a lot of money and a lot of people will obviously because the zero sum game where someone pays it someone mm. has to has to receive it um, a lot of people are going to lose money. So for me, it's about becoming as intelligent as possible. So I'm over the 50% line receiving people's money. And the further I can get over that line, the more money I can hope to receive. Yeah. I, look, I imagine, especially because you're going in so early with a lot of them, it's going to be really hard for you to lose money now. Mm. But it just depends how much money can you make. I think like, I, I do think it's some, quite a bit of asymmetric right. risk reward. So more potential gain than potential loss because even when you mint these or you buy these at bottom level you're paying 500 bucks maybe a thousand bucks for them 
for it to go to zero, okay, you lose a thousand bucks, but it's not out of the ordinary for something to go from a thousand bucks, especially if it's well researched and you know which ones you're sort of wanting to buy to 10,000 bucks, which means you only have to hit one in nine to, to have a profitable um, trading record. It's a good way to look at it, isn't it, really? That's yeah. very asymmetric. I like very that. Asymmetric. Mm. <laughs> I've, I haven't actually watched much of Gary V this week. I've had a pretty busy week at work, but I'll be interested to see because it's still something that he's talking about a lot. And, and since like, you know, probably like 2001 before they were even a thing, he's like, <laughs> abuse, absolutely. <sighs> yeah, be interested to see where he's looking because he does seem to be very ahead of the game, especially with these things. Yes. Yeah, that, that's honestly my plan. And I think a lot of these chats will be, at least on my end, very he- NFT heavy because NFT and Etsy, if you want to learn about that, subscribe. If you don't, if you want to learn about <laughs> the stuff that feeds doing, subscribe. If you don't, you're in the wrong place. Because yeah, I think that's the wrong place. <laughs> and if you want to get more than 11% gains, listen to the NFT stuff because uh, <laughs> we're not going on the moon with Westfield, I'd say. Not yet. You don't know. You don't not know what could yet. happen next week. Um, but I'm curious, I'm curious cause I know you're, um, very intelligent, very motivated man. Mm-hmm. And I'm excited to see, because last time I got ahead a little bit, I saw a quick, uh, grab onto the back of my snout and slingshot yourself back ahead. So I'm definitely not <laughs> sleeping in the trophy room. Although I've given the trophies a couple of kisses and polishes. I will be waiting to see Pete slingshot past the door. Uh, <laughs> well, the whole time we've been talking, I've been thinking in my head going, all right, do I need to liquidate some of those stocks that I have to give me some cash money and look into NFTs? Because I'm like, if I'm going to win this one, and this is what I did last time, was I liquidated the entire little crypto portfolio I had and, and looked at Axie as it was being um, released under Binance and was like, well, maybe if I put all of it on here. Yeah. And then that, that paid off pretty well to start with. Um, would actually be doing better if I hadn't sold part of that right now, but not by not by too much. So mm-hmm. maybe looking at from a liquidity point of view, I've got forty seven thousand dollars in liquidity. Are there some curio cards I could possibly look into? And maybe if I spend the rest of today looking into that, I could have some interesting things, or I could lose a lot of money, but hopefully not. I could have some very interesting things for next week. But I'm very much a noob in the NFT space. So I'm going to have to really look and understand why would you buy like what why are some cards worth a lot more than the other cards you know why is number seven worth more than number four and like all this random stuff that i've looked into and gone well it makes no sense to me right so i think i have to understand it in order to make a sensible trade yes and then the other thing you have in your back pocket which is a pretty big card that could pay off very well is the amazon store Yes, yes. We, uh, we've got our CAD drawing. We've, we've pretty much got everything ready to go. They're going to be sending us, uh, I, think, I think Matt's already ordered it. I think he, they're sending us one product mm. so we can give them a little tick of approval if we're happy with that. We're going to start, uh, start building that out. Bro, you should, um, you should walk out. You have shown the product, haven't you? That's not a secret. Mm, I, I think we have shown the product. I think we have. We should, either way, I won't say it just in case we haven't. Uh, but um, <laughs> you should walk us through like your CAD drawings and your, your competitors and what you're expecting like projection wise, maybe on the next step. Yeah, I reckon that'd be interesting to, to walk everyone through. I'll have to sort of pull it all t- together and find it. And hopefully we might even have the things that can like, literally hold it up and show you how anti-fatigued I am at the moment. That would be sick. It'd be bloody amazing. Um, but that's that's kind of the slow burn at the moment. We're we're in the middle of setting all that up. Like the store set up, everything's ready to go. It's literally just getting that product, and then once we're happy with the product, and literally just going boom, we're on. Mm-hmm. Get the photography done, get the videos done, any sort of funnels or pages we want with it. It's all going to happen pretty fast, I think. So I'm looking looking forward to that. That's sort of I think important to note for anyone else starting something is always that like that Etsy store for me. It's like it was like four weeks of just like thick, what is it called? Thick, thick sand, quicksand, quicksand, <laughs> thick sand. Mm. And it's just like, you got to like really like push through that initial friction that a lot of people fall off on actually getting through. And then once you through that, it's just a valley. And it's like, for me, I'm not profitable on that store because you have to like, 
buy your way into, or you don't have to buy your way, but you have to at least market your way if you don't have money. And that takes either money or time. Mm. For me, I'm putting money in and it's going to be like that for another four to eight weeks. And then you should start to like be coming out the other way uphill, starting to see some nice trees, get up on that cliff face. And then from there, it's just all profit. But it's like, it's those eight weeks for a digital product or for a physical product. It could be 40 weeks. It could be 25 weeks. And once you get through there, you realize like, oh, not, not so many people made it through that. Um, and from there, it's all just profit that, that goes into your mm. NFTs. <laughs> and what I've, what I've actually found out, or not found out, but um, one thing we've noticed and I've seen it before is it's really been sort of like it shoots up and then you have a plateau when you get to wait for something to be done and then it shoots up. So it's sort of rather than being a smooth uh, line or a smooth curve or something into creating the business, it's been lots of like massive jumps, then nothing, then a massive jump, then nothing. And so for me, that's the frustrating part is because I want everything to happen really fast. And mm. so when you have those times where you've got to wait on these little things, I just, I get very frustrated because I just want it to happen. Mm. And so the actual process and the, the doing of things probably only took us two weeks in total, but the actual setting up of the store and getting everything done and getting the product and the back and forth with suppliers is probably an eight week journey in itself for us at the moment. So that's what I'm sort of reflecting on the moment. Go, how can we speed that process up? But we're almost there. And I know I've just got to be a little bit more patient because it's going to come and we're going to have this extra cash to throw into NFTs. And what was the goal? By December, we had to be at a mil. <laughs> <laughs> Same like that. Come on, Christie's. Come on, Christie's. Surely. Come on, Christie's. Surely. Um, I think we estimated three years, which... Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna have some backward slides that you oh. have to be in here. Um, <laughs> well, that attitude you are, yeah, of course. <laughs> Would we want it to be just all the way up? And that's how you do it, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it would make for a pretty good YouTube channel. People would hate it. We've made a million dollars in you know three months buying digital pictures. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be as good. I think people want to see the. Yeah. A little bit of the struggle which i like and almost like these things i've gone to speaking more like at the start i'm like oh what will people stay and listen to and now i'm like if you want to click off this video you can click off this video but i'm like what would me and pete like to go back and listen to yeah and what can we what what would be really awesome 10 years time when people are like oh you know benj and pete who are doing the 30 mil to 100 million dollar challenge <laughs> the 30 mil to a billion dollar challenge it's like yeah they started back here to check out what they did yeah it's going to be interesting a lot of people talk about nfts as you know when our parents were younger and people said well why didn't you buy land on the coast because it's just shut up in valley like our nfts that digital land is that what people are buying at the moment and mm. in 10 20 years kids like our kids are literally going to look back and be like dad why didn't you buy the nft you're an yeah. idiot yeah and i mean it's it's the same thing web 2.0 with the social media the social media like people who what is it kayla itson's if you're australian you probably know her mm -hmm. she's a very big fitness instagram influencer who i believe just sold her company for like 350 mil or something 350 million dollars and what did she do she got in on day one on instagram and just posted high quality fitness content for eight years kayla That's what she did scenes bikini body bikini body and it's just like, cool, she did it right. There's a lot of people who also posted the wrong stuff or posted stuff that they weren't passionate about and fell off the horse. Same as Web 1.0, which is um, websites. It's mm. like there's for every Amazon.com, there's a lot of, I think, diapers.com, which Amazon actually ended up acquiring, <laughs> like and pets.com. These things just lost money, lost money, lost money. And it's like, these are the things. The, and like you say, the real estate before that, why didn't you buy a block of land here? There's a lot of block of lands that you shouldn't have bought, but it's like, can you identify the ones that will get you the $350 million exit? I feel like that's the game. Actually talking of like diapers.com and those sorts of things. Have you listened to business wars, the podcast? Ah, oh, dude, love it. So good. Have you listened to the Amazon one? Amazon Walmart. Yeah. So, so, so good. And it's, it's so interesting listening to the Amazon stuff because I didn't even realize beforehand that Amazon's like part of their business, like structure business plan was literally because they've got so much cash on hand and so many different businesses, they could lower their, the price of like, let's say diapers, lower the price of diapers, 
everyone buys diapers for them. They devalue the business over here that's diapers.com, mm. say, to the point where they can buy it at a really reduced price because they've just spent all this money destroying it so that they can yeah. then buy it and steal their customers. I was like, ruthless, but it's ruthless. bloody awesome. <laughs> yeah, both. Both. Absolutely genius, but also absolutely disgusting. So ruthless. So <laughs> ruthless. It's literally like... I want to buy your business, but it's too expensive right now. So I'm going to make you bleed money until you beg me to buy it. <laughs> we have just lost you again. Hello. To a degree. Also, if you want more of that, I don't. I think Pete, you've read him. Uh, Jeff Bezos' letters to shareholders, his annual letter to his shareholders since 1997 growing Amazon every single year and what he was focused on, what, how well they did. And in there, he has those principles, like exactly what Pete's talking about. Um, but one of them is like having those fixed costs up front, going into the red, having everybody else not paying those fixed costs. And then from there, as you scale, those fixed costs become tiny compared to your massive customer base like Amazon Prime. But in a way, like, in the Etsy world, in a very miniature way, in the notebook, a digital notebook on Etsy world, it's like I'm willing to go uh, two years into the red, just buying that top land real estate off everybody, and having me be the only people who people buy journals from. Figure out what the customer wants, give it to them. Figure out what they want, give it to them, and just overpaying for that. And in same two years time, I've got. 350,000 sales, 350,000 emails, people who love me. And you can just, you can come out with a, hey, do you want the 2023 um, digital planner with the exclusive sticker pack with this and that? It's $67. Um, you can get it here. And out of those 300,000 people, 3,000 of them buy. And all of that is profit because you've built that fixed cost of that brand in and anything that's an upsell, a cross sell, um, you can sell classes on building your own journals and um, there's plenty of stuff you could you can sell once you actually build up that asset. But what's going to fuel that is like if if this was my livelihood, like it is for so many people on Etsy, there's no way I can do that. But if I've got eighty seven thousand dollars coming from NFTs and I literally fuel it into Etsy, no one else no one else is really doing that. And then Etsy starts paying you back, and I push it back in NFTs, and that's what Amazon did. They ran at a loss for so long, and Amazon Web Services was one of their biggest successes that literally mm -hmm. just fueled every other test and like jeff bezos also said one in 20 is like what was he called it's the baseball analogy it's like yeah of hitting like a run to first base second base third base or home run you can hit a shot that's a thousand runs like a disproportionate amount of runs and so you just test a bunch of stuff until you hit a thousand home runs in one swing and it just pays for everything yeah exactly it's a good business strategy yeah, fantastic. You're going to be it's the richest man in the world. I think it paid off well for him. And that, that reminds me of like Uber as well, Uber, Airbnb. They're all doing the same thing at the moment in terms of how they scale up. They're not trying to make money now. They're just trying to grab all of the real estate in whatever market they're in. And then they don't need to really market anymore because it just becomes, oh, I'll Airbnb, I'll just Uber it kind of thing. Right. Um, there's a few like competitors to Uber now. I wouldn't be able to name one. Because you'd still call it Uber. It's just become like your Uber somewhere. It's become a word. It's become a verb to do to do that. Very and so true. when I look at that, that's someone who's grabbed the market. They could almost stop their advertising soon and you still use them, which means their profit just goes like bang. Right. That's that, so true. Uh, and they raise money in order to do that. But I mean, that's mm -hmm. all the biggest business. Another area that that's applicable, which I'm thinking through for one of my businesses outside yeah. this is Facebook ads, which I've never really run before. They say whoever can pay the most for a customer always wins. So if we if we have drink bottle businesses, for example, and um, I sell a drink bottle for a hundred bucks, you sell for ten bucks. I can pay a hundred bucks for a customer. You can pay ten bucks. But then what they do is like, cool, you have an upsell, or you customize your own drink bottle, or you do something digital, like you get access to a community of drink bottlers and. It's a terrible oh, example, drink but, bottles. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and then you get a drink bottle coach on top of that out the, out the gate. And you can now sell this for $9.97. Nobody can, nobody can match you. We're targeting the same customer and someone who's selling drink bottles for $10 has absolutely no chance of actually matching you. Um, and this is something I haven't really put into practice yet, but I'm excited to mm -hmm. in the second half of this year for one of our businesses just being like, how can we offer so much value in a product that we can charge 
five times the competitor and then have just traffic coming in on tap for that. That's cool. I'm just thinking how I could apply that to, to the challenge here that we're doing at the moment, but uh, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Only fans. Only fans. Did it you see that they're keeping fans. sexual content on there now? After they're saying they were going to get rid of it? Were they really? Yeah. they. That's the they whole did. business model. Well, I think it was something to do with someone who was funding them mm. because they released it and said, you know, due to X, Y, Z, we're taking all, all sexually explicit content off. And obviously everyone freaked yeah, and I weird. imagine like a thousand people went, I'm creating like top fans or whatever they were going to call it, the exact mm. same thing that day. Uh, and then they re- released literally just a few days ago saying, no, we are going to keep it on there. We've come to terms with like whoever finances us uh, that we will be able to keep it on there. Makes sense. Because just think, of all the, think of all the poor creators that uh, would really miss out on the meal. I'm just saying like they would be really struggling if we took that off of that. I can probably name a few. Robbie Skavicki <laughs> being one of them. Hey, Robbie Skavicki being, I don't know if you saw him earlier in the video, but he did sneak in. We did catch a glimpse of which we'd love to have him on to talk about some real estate. We would love to have him on just a bit mm. of a survivor reunion and some real estate. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. <laughs> so good. Actually, love literally man. just before this, someone messaged me and said, Benji, I've seen his face before and i've heard his voice he seems really familiar and i was like did you watch survivor and she's like oh my god yes <laughs> <laughs> that's the stage that three yeah. years on it's like where do i know you from <laughs> yeah, I'm like, someone. <laughs> sounds like you're underwater How's that? Now. Yeah, we're good now. We're good. Yeah, I've, I've had a couple of people recognize me from this show. Oh, <laughs> Benji from that, just in the street a couple of times a day. NFTs. <laughs> NFTs. So, yeah. But maybe we'll wrap up today's episode with what are we focusing on over the next week? Like, what are we working towards and how are we, how are we going to achieve that? I got 70 Etsy sales at the moment. I want to push that out to 150 um and just really just build that store up we've got a dark mode journal because we've had a request for it coming in a dark mode notebook so just instead of white paper black paper you can write with white ink on it it's very cool go grab one (laughs) um so they're my two big things um and keep working on those processes so we're going to get a customer service girl in uh to help with the communication there's actually a couple there's really some really cool exciting stuff on etsy which i didn't get to talk about but i'll i'll chat about that next week um yeah and, and keep testing those ads spending a maximum budget which my budget's now a hundred dollars a day not 25 that got lifted Ooh, um, nice. i'm waiting for that to lift again so i can just mm. keep keep spinning the the ceiling and then it's going to be a deep dive on nfts to me and how am i going to do it i was just talking to jay lou who's got the nft bug my girlfriend and uh, she's bought two nfts um mm. and basically i feel like i'm on level four tier four You've got mm. the creators and the founders and the artists of the NFTs. You've got those really early coders, adopters, really well networked, Gary V sort of people. Then you've got the third level, which is like, um, I, I follow like the Alex Beckers, the Journey Cryptos, uh, people who are mostly the YouTubers and the influencers who, you know, they get some brand deals. They get a little bit of extra knowledge and there's little exclusive Discord groups. And then there's me who follow those influencers and look around. So basically, I'm like, how do I cha- how do I climb this chain of command to get up to level three, to get up to level two, uh, and get the inside knowledge early? Um, so that's really what I'm looking into. I'll probably buy a couple more things um, this week as well, and uh, just get ridiculously educated. And I'll put together a, a NFT um, spreadsheet dashboard with everything I find. Very nice. Very nice. I think for me this week. It's going to be starting to learn a little bit more about NFTs because I'd like to try and hedge some bets in there, which I think that could be a good thing for me to look into a little bit more. Uh, It's going to be through TikTok. I'm going to do part of it. I've been enjoying those really short, sharp learning from different people, uh, getting lots of different ideas, Mm. finding people who agree with my biases and disagree with my biases and starting to understand both sides of the different arguments. 
that's gonna that'll make up a small portion of what I'm doing. The large part this week is gonna be the Amazon stuff, really making sure the store is ready, everything's built out, everything looks good. So the second we get the product, we can take the photos, we can put it up, and we can just go go straight away. And as far as my other stocks go, they're not gonna be moving much. Um, I won't be. I don't plan on moving anything in or out of those at this stage because they're more longer term holds. So we'll see how they go over the next next week or two, but I don't expect too much to change there. Yep. Fantastic. Easy. Very exciting. All right. And just a quick estimate from you. It's week 10. You got 48, you got 47K. Mm-hmm. When's your 100K cross? <laughs> it really depends on maybe crypto or not maybe definitely crypto and nfts because if you're looking at this from a pure stock point of view if you could double your money every five years then you're killing it you're absolutely killing it crushing it so i would like to do it within the next eight weeks i like it i like it and yours is within the next eight to ten minutes i assume (laughs) ten minutes i temporarily crossed it then crossed back i think this apple this month should cross it alone Uh, I know it's something that's crazy to say because it's 44K at the moment, but we should buy more outside. I'm so confident. But with this Christie's auction, I I can't see the the trend slowing down. They're so historic because they are the first. So even past the Christie's auction, they hold actual collector's historic value. I wouldn't be shocked if the Apple crossed it in the next, what is it? Uh, October is four weeks mm. away. Uh, but I mean, if you look at my portfolio, it's where 97% of my gains have come from. Uh, <laughs> I'm just riding an apple. <laughs> it's not but that's that. legit. That's what you said, though, is it's you, you don't need to hit a winner on everything. You just need the one that's the thousand home runs. And that's what you're finding right now is the thousand home runs in that one card. It's very true. And the other thing on that is it's pointed me in a direction like I, I'd be the IPO guy right now if those IPOs were paying 40K. But because the Apple and because these NFTs have paid such crazy gains compared to everything else, it's literally what's leading my snout towards more NFTs. So yeah, one, it's been the one home run. And then two, it shows me where to find more home runs, which is in that world. So we'll dive deep into that over the next, I'd say 10 to 15 weeks. Amazing, mate. All right. Well, I reckon we might leave it there and hopefully the next week we'll We'll, uh, we'll see you over 100K by next week. I hope to see. Because that's, uh, that's going to push me to do some bigger things, bigger and better things. I well, that's why I'm excited. I'm excited for that rubber band to snap and see you absolutely fly. But well, if you I are think- watching this and you want to see people fly, <laughs> hit that like, hit that subscribe. Tell us how far you want him to fly in the next four weeks. Give him a little mm-hmm. bit of uh, fire to his very well sculpted behind and i may need to start like a little go fund me so if you know we'll just chuck a little bit of cash in there to help me catch benji i think it's going to be necessary you could you could take that 48k hmm. take it down put it on red and just be like this is so much easier to 10x your money than 20x let's just let it ride on red get to 100k in a week and then 10x it over the next 12 months could be the way to go <laughs> every weekend week on week <laughs> every week <laughs> oh man all right brother Love good it. chats see you guys in the next one bye for now